Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elcara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. Well, hello there. I'm KY4BDP Brian for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. And what do I have in my hands today but a staff from Lord of the Rings? No, no, that, that's not what it is, but it is a mast. And as you may have seen in some of our earlier videos, we've used some of these uh, different types of masts to get certain uh, typically uh, uh, dipoles up in the air in the center or as the latest OCF antenna, the off-center fed dipole antenna, get the, uh, uh, not the middle, but the center point for your two wires up into the highest part of the air. And what I like about this mast is how light it is. I actually have a really nice fiberglass mast. I'm very proud to have it, very happy to have it. It's working great because I needed something that would be a little bit more permanent in uh, the backyard here at the compound. But this mast, not only could I use it in the backyard, and you may have watched the uh, Palomar Engineers off-center fed dipole, I actually showcased this a little bit. I didn't talk a lot about it, but this is what I actually put the antenna up on top, uh, is because it is extremely rigid. I mean, you can take one of these carbon fiber elements out, all the way out, and you're not gonna be able to break this. I mean, this is extremely stiff, rigid, and so you don't get a lot of that bend that you might with a diameter of, of the uh, mast of, uh, what have we got here, about five eighths inches, maybe an inch. So it gives you extreme rigidity. It's lightweight, so it's easy to take along. And if so, if you are putting up antennas that need that really high center feed point, you can do that with this particular mast. Now, when I was at Hamcation, you know, when people still traveled, back in January, I got a chance to talk to Steve at Gigaparts, and uh, we were talking about these masts as one of the things that they were really proud of. And they've got a couple of versions of this, a shorter one and the longer one. This is the actual longer version of that mass because I wanted to have a lot of flexibility for that center point to be as high as I could get it. And, uh, and therefore, it's done just that. And what I love about this antenna is it already has the collars already on there. Some of the antenna uh, masks, excuse me, uh, that you've seen me uh, introduce, uh, you'll have to put these collars on yourself, which is not hard to do unless you're me. And I actually put them on not quite as correctly as I could have on the fiberglass mask, and I've since corrected that after some good constructive feedback in the video. But this comes with the uh, the actual collars already installed, and uh, once you get this way up into the air, it's ready to go. Uh, you can tighten it down. There are some thumb screws. Let's bring it up here where you guys can see these. There are some thumb screws where you can tighten these up a little bit, and so that way, if uh, if they're a little bit loose you can actually tighten that up. And again, once it's up all the way, uh, you've got a really high mast. In fact, let's go ahead and put this up and then let's, I'll move the camera where you guys can see it. Oh, by the way, uh, they mark these in red. They don't want you going any higher than that. On some of the other masts, you would actually have to measure seven inches or whatever their preference is for that. But with this, it's actually red and uh, gives you a really good uh, way to do that. In fact, you usually want to do this with the end first here. So let's do this end, take it to where it's almost red, and then tighten it down. There we go. And this one's a little loose, so I'm gonna tighten down the thumb screw just a little bit here. Then we're gonna go out with the next length, out to where it's red, bring it back a little bit. And then we've got our next one. And you can see how easy this is, because it's just not that heavy. Um, and that's one of again, the reason I wanted to give this a go is the the weight of this is extremely light, as a lot of fiberglass based products are. So this one's getting pretty close to the end here. There we go. I'm still able to hold this really fairly easily. I've got one more length here. And I'm actually going to put that in on the ground and pull it. There we go. And folks, it's out. And I've already got the other length. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this up on the center. 
and then bring you back and I'll show you the actual height of this mast as best as I can with the camera that I've got and uh, here at the center where I usually mount my masts and we'll give you an idea of what that looks like in the next segment. Alrighty, so what we're going to do now is just kind of take you up and give you an idea of what this is going to look like. So I'm going to pivot a little bit here so we don't put you up into the sun and take you all the way up. We're looking at about 37 feet, folks. And then we'll come back down. And you can see how many lengths we got there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven lengths of pole. And each of the rods themselves are about five feet long. So from this bottom one down to the bottom, you're looking at about five feet. Maybe just a little bit more than that, somewhere in that ballpark. And that's what's going to give you that length that you're looking for. Alrighty, so when I bring you back, we're going to have an antenna um, on top of this. And we're going to show you, again, what it looks like to have an antenna mounted upon it. And what I'll do is I'll use the soda beams antenna for that demonstration. So in the next segment, we'll see an antenna being put on it and hoisted. Be right back. Okay, folks, I wanted to bring you back. Now, what I've done with the soda beams is anchored two of the legs. That's what you typically do with this particular antenna, is you'll anchor two of the legs, and then once those are anchored, you'll anchor the last one, which I'll show you here just as we go. So I have one of the legs for the antenna going this way, a little bit through that tree, and it's anchored to the fence on the far side there. Let's see if we can zoom in on that just a little bit. I can keep it steady. So you can see it's anchored there on that fence. The other piece that I've done is the center. So if we go to the top, you'll see this yellow fluorescent line. And what you do is you anchor the middle piece like I've done here. These come with stakes. If you haven't seen our video on the soda beams, I'll put a card up in the top right. But you really ought to go have a look at it. It's great for QRP. And once you have one side anchored and the middle anchored, the pole will stand on its own. You just have it lean in a little bit and normally you want it to lean into the wind. If you have any wind at all, have it lean into the wind a little bit. Um, but uh, what I haven't done is anchored the other end. So let's go do that and that will mean the antenna is ready to go and it already has a length of coax. So we'll come over here where we have our other end. And let me pull some of this out where you guys can see it. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take this second leg and we're going to move off away from the pole. And ideally you want to be uh, parallel to the same line that you use for your other leg. Sometimes that's not possible because you may not actually have the room to go all the way parallel. But I'm able to stretch this pretty good. I'm trying to stay away from another antenna. And then what we'll do is we'll anchor it right here. So let's bring it down and let's anchor this in. Want to run the little guy stake here through the loop. Try that one more time. There we go. A little bit tricky doing it one-handed. And you put it in the ground. And it's going nowhere. And that is how you guy that out. You do one leg, do the middle, lean it a little bit, then do the second leg. So now you can see it's up in the air. It's ready to go. And you can see that this mast is not bending hardly at all. And that's how rigid it is. It's one of the reasons why I got it. I had another mast that was very lightweight, but you had to twist and lock it into place. And if it got the least bit wet, sometimes it didn't work very well. But with these locking collars on this mast, you really don't have a problem with moisture getting in the way. And even if you do, you can use the thumb screws to make it even tighter. So I just wanted to show you that. And some of you keen eyed, you'll notice I'm not using the full length this is, uh, antenna is made to be at about 21 feet.
So I've actually taken out, or not taken out, but reduced two of the sections completely. So I'm not using 10 feet or 10 feet plus of this, and that puts me at about 21 feet, around 20, 21 feet that they recommend for this particular antenna. And that's what's also great about these lightweight masts. You can make it as long as you need it, depending on what your center point needs to be. So folks, I just wanted to show you this mast. Not the most inexpensive mast you'll, you'll get, that's for sure. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you <laughs> that it's an inexpensive mast, it's not. But how lightweight and easy to deploy it is, you can adjust your height based on the collars to, to the height that you actually need, and away you go. So take a look at Gigaparts, take a look at this particular mast, see if it's gonna fit in an area of your kit. Is it for uh, soda activations? Mm. Mm, that'd be tough because even when it's fully uh, um, back into its most compact form, it's still about six feet tall, just a little shy of six feet once all the collars are down, probably about 5'10", something like that. So do you want to carry that around on a soda activation? Probably not. But anything else out in the field, field day, uh, doing parks on the air for sure. You know, you just need the space for an antenna like this, but the mast itself will not be the weak spot of your configuration. Carbon fiber, folks, what do they think of next? Lightweight, resilient, hard to break for sure. I recommend this product highly. I'm KY4 BDP Brian for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, 73s.